If you've ever gone peering at these little shrubs, you might have noticed hanging up in them old tatty cobwebs full of uh, dead leaves that have blown there. And if you look more closely, you'll find that's not exactly the full picture. The leaves are dead, certainly, but they have, haven't just blown there. They've been put there and very carefully engineered by a little creature that lives in them and fashions them into a home, and that's the leaf-curling spider. And you can see there's one there, one there, and uh, one out there. Quite a lot of them in here. Well, how does it do it? Let's have a look at one more closely. I'll just um, pull this apart and you can see the beastie. You have to be pretty careful because they they remain absolutely stationary as long as they think they can get away with it. And when they know their cover's blown, they take off like a rocket and uh, you often can't see them. But you can just see if I open that up there, the long legs that are poked out of the leaf and they are rested on the web to feel the vibrations of any insects. And if I can peel that away without hurting the beastie, you see down the back of it, the spider's body is actually rather beautiful. It's a sort of jeweled, mottled, creamy pattern. And uh, there it is. Very splendid creature indeed. Leaf curling spider. That's going to trundle off now and drop to the ground, but it won't be disadvantaged without this leaf at all. It can easily make itself a new home. I'll just put it on the ground and show you how it does it. See, it lowers itself like that on a web, and it first of all spins its webs in the trees, and lowers itself down like that to find on the forest floor a suitable leaf. And you'll see a lot of them are lying around here. Things like that or that. And it picks the one it likes, and they have preferences, and then it toes it all the way up again on its thread into the cobwebs in the tree. It's quite a sort of feat of cranesmanship, if you like. And once it's up there, it then starts to work it into a home. And they use different techniques. A long leaf like that might be curled, and many of them are curled round like that, or uh, a wide leaf might simply be stitched from side to side to make a little container like that. If you look over here, you can see that's exactly what they've done. See, there's a coiled one. The long leaf has been curled round and round and round. And beside it is this one where the sides of the leaf have just been stitched together to make a little enclosure. And here is one in the process of being made. The spider's actually drawing together there the sides of a green leaf, uh, not a dead one that's been picked up off the floor. So they can make themselves a very natty little home. It's silk lined, it gives them camouflage, and it gives them protection rather like a hermit crab. Well, the parts of the web that you can actually see with the naked eye easily are really just the structural ones. They're the parts that uh, they hang everything from. The part they cat inse catch insects in is actually more delicate than that, and it's a bit harder to see unless you show it up. And for that, you can use a mouthful of water. It's not pretty, but it's effective. We make a little mist, it clings to the cobweb, and shows us where the cobweb is. And there you have it, little droplets all over this very, very fine mesh that's the true cobweb for catching the insects. They fly into it, the animal's sitting there in its uh, little leafy shelter, its long legs perched on the web, it fills the vibrations, rushes out, and there's breakfast. Mm -hmm.